So I'm Brian Biggs and I'm the Director of Cultural Legacies at the Blue Coat, which is quite a grand title. I mean, what it means actually is that um, I look after the, our history in relation to the present. So it's, it is the oldest building in Liverpool City Centre. It is the first art centre in the UK, so it's got a really interesting history. And it started as um, a charity school for orphan children associated with the church, which was right opposite us in Church Street. And it was built by a man called Brian Blundell, who was a mariner who made money from the colonies and particularly from um, the slave trade or goods that were enabled by it, such as cotton, sugar and tobacco. So it, its origins go right back to that early colonial period in the 18th century. 1717 is the date we have on the front of the building. Um, so that was a charity school for 200 years. Uh, and as the city grew up and the city became more dense and dirty because it was an industrial city with the smoke from the ships and, and so on, they moved to Wavertree in 1906. So for 200 years it's a school and then since 1907 there have been artists working here and it was formally constituted in 1927. And that makes it the longest running art centre in the country. So it's always had artists working here who pay us rent and they still we still have a community of artists who have studios here um, and we let the spaces for various events um, external to what we do so a lot of commercial events like weddings and conferences but also our own program is focused mainly around the contemporary arts in the gallery as well as performing arts we do and importantly we do a very big participation program which is really sort of pioneering it's working with adults with learning disabilities it's called Blue Room uh, and that's been going for about about 15 years now. From the, from the front, the building looks ostensibly the same as it did in the 18th century, but then of course when you go inside, it's a very different, um, different story. And most of the inside has been um, refashioned in some way. So if you look at a print from the early 18th century, it's pretty much the same. In 1941, the building was bombed in the Second World War and suffered extensive damage. So in the 1950s, it was restored. Um, and then, as I said, in, in 2005, we closed for this big development, which is this big new wing, which is on the back of the building. And it's a very modern extension. It's an arts wing. It's a very elegant gallery and performance space. Uh, and that was the, the last big change in, when that opened in 2008 for Capital of Culture. Because it's grade one listed, you can't, change much so you have to get permission for any alterations that's why the front you know, with the railings the cobbles this beautiful architecture looks the same the garden has changed quite a bit um, over the years it was a girls playground it was an orchard uh, it was used for air raid shelters during the second world war um, we've had to lose some of the trees because of the ash dieback but we've just recently planted three new trees which is very exciting so it's a building that is it, although it looks like it's always been here it's quite dynamic and th partly because things do change inside and partly because of the breadth of activities you don't quite know what's going to happen from week to week. But yeah, I've, I've enjoyed working here. Obviously, I've been working with many, many different people. Sometimes you forget their names after all the years and years of working with volunteers and staff. Um, there's so many people I've actually worked with. And I think for me, that's what's kept it enjoyable is that um, because it's a contemporary art centre, working with artists uh, and that the art, artistic practice changes over, over the decades, you're always being challenged and stimulated by what the work that you do. It's just a fantastic building, you know, physically it's a beautiful building, it's right in the centre of town. So it's become more than just an art centre that puts on events, it's like a social centre, it's part of the cultural fabric of, of the city and that's what I love about it. I can go down to the cafe now and I'll always meet someone. But yeah, I mean there's just so, so many different exhibitions that, that we've done and performances. We used to do a lot more live programme than we can at the moment um, and I can think of many sort of memorable events here. I mean Yoko Ono returned to the Blue Coat in 2008 and that was, that was a delight to have a meal with Yoko afterwards and to talk about her art and stuff. So you do get to meet really interesting artists, people like Jeremy Deller who won the Turner Prize, had his first commission here. 
uh, back in 1997, and that was very rewarding just to see how, how he then progressed. So I think, I suppose the most rewarding thing is supporting artists at that early stage in their career, who then go on to, no, they don't all go on to become household names, far from it, but it's just that early support you can give to someone who's maybe just, just graduated from art school. Well, in terms of the future of the Blue Coat, um, it, it has got a constitution um, that was enshrined in 1927, so we own the building. Its purpose is, is to preserve the architecture, but also to present the arts, support the arts within it. So we're not going to vary much from that, um, that, that mission, if you like, to, to, be, to, to be an art centre for the people of Liverpool and to protect its, its heritage. So that is, that's a sort of given. I suppose the, the, the main challenge now is just survival of all the arts organisations that I know. They're all having a really difficult time because uh, costs have gone up incredibly and income has not stayed static or gone down. It's a very competitive field for raising funds for, the, uh, for us. We get money from the Arts Council, from City Council, so those are greatly appreciated as revenue funds. But we have to, to work very, very hard to earn money. Uh, it's a very expensive building to keep up. So, the main thing, my hope is that we survive, um, we don't have to make too many compromises, that it still retains um, its focus as a centre for artists. Um, we listen to our audiences, so we, we have to make sure that we're still doing that, so the audiences actually feel an affinity with what we do. As I said before, for many people it's just a social centre, it's a place to have a cup of tea or relax in the garden, it's a symbol of you know, Liverpool's culture. Um, they don't all want to come see exhibitions, but as long as we can still be that venue, that has a, you know, strikes a chord with local people. I think that's my, my hope for the future. It's something that a friend of mine said, and she was thinking of moving to another city. And she decided not to, because she said, there isn't, there isn't a blue coat in another city. So I know it, it, it is pretty unique. You'd have to, if it wasn't here, you'd have to invent it. So I suppose that's the thing I'd like to say, is that there's, um, it, it is the sim I would say the cultural symbol of Liverpool. It's not the Tate, it's not the Walker, it's not the Philharmonic. Um, and it doesn't have the resources that those organisations have. Um, but I think for many people it is the sort of cultural heart of this great city and it, it, it's been very resilient. You know, 300 years it's still here.